Welcome back. Today we're going to tie the flatliner. The flatliner is one of two flies. They're identical. One's a bang tail and one's a flatliner. The flatliner and the bang tail, the flatliner actually came first. But uh, what they are is they're the same fly with a different head shape, uh, not shape, uh, lay. So this one's a laying normal vertical and this one is horizontal. This fly was designed to be a suspension bait. If you look at those, you can just see that uh, they're identical. One's got a flat head on the top and one's got a minnow head like it's going to be. Turn that into the camera there. Uh, one of them's made to swim and one of them's made to be the flat liner. It's made to be like a suspension bait. And so what that means is a suspension bait is made to go at a certain depth and you stop and it just hovers right there. And so what I did this fly for and why, and, I, and you know, I'm always talking about my favorite this, favorite that. This is probably my favorite fly to fish. Not necessarily that it's the best, catches the most, biggest that. It's just really, really fun to fish it because of the way you fish it. It's sitting flat on the water. It's supposed to be a dying bait fish, right? And so it sits flat on the water like this, hooked down, and you just rip on it like that. And you over accentuate it. You, you really pull it maybe two, three feet in one single pull and you stop. And what it does is it goes up because it's trying to set flat like this, but you dragged it underwater and it kind of comes up and it sits there and just at the mercy of any, any, you know, current that's out there and it just kind of barely undulates. And then you sit there for a second, you tap, tap, tap it again and just wait. And, and, and trout will act just like bass. Bass love this thing. They'll come underneath it, boom, and they'll sit there and you give it that little twitch and they just blow up on it. So it's a super fun fly to fish. It's one, you know, it's, as far as I know, it's about the first, you know, suspension style fly. Uh, it's, it's a pretty simple fly. I mean, it looks kind of complicated when you look at it, like, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. But it's really not. We're gonna, it's, it's very simple tail setup and it's a very simple front end. And so I tie this thing, I always have, I'm going to use universal partridge hooks. I like these hooks. They're nice and light. I don't want a heavy gauge wire on this fly because I want this one to suspend. The flat liner is a suspension. This is the bang tail. Same thing, just vertical. This fly is designed to run. This fly is made to go really fast. Lots of kick to it. You know, lots of undulation to that to the tail. And but I still use the universal predators on that one. It's the universal. This is a one aught and a one, and so. They're, they're pretty simple, just show you there. Uh, pretty simple hooks, just a, a limerick wide gap ring eye. We're gonna start this fly, oh, as always I'm using, not as always, but normally I'm using uh, GSP 100. And so what we're gonna do with this hook is we're gonna break it down in thirds. You can go to the halfway point if you want. Start at the halfway, usually somewhere between half and a third. We're not worried about this hook. We're going to cover it up with most every, every, you know, the materials. But basically what we're trying to do is we want, we want it really light because we want this tail to just, we don't want anything to drop and, and sink. We want it all at one time just kind of float there. So I'm going to start my, my thread right about at the third part, just a little bit forward of halfway point right there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to set two tails and I'm going to set three or four turns of uh, polar chenille, and then I'm going to do this marabou. So I don't need a lot of I don't need a lot of hook gap here. So for the tails, as always, I'm using. Uh, I mean, I, not as always, but frequently you'll see that I I, I just love American saddles. I use these things for a, a, a lot of my flies. They're really they, they come in just an enormous array of colors. Uh, you get a, a, a ton of pack a lot of these things. If you wanted to use, like on that, this is a commercial tie there. If you want to use standard schloppen, that's fine too. But try to get one that's a little bit more webby. Don't go for the neck hackles that are just a little thinner. If you, if you do use a neck, make sure you're way up high into it. And you kind of want the broader profile to the feather. So what I've done is I, I stripped two of these off. I just matched a pair, right? I already did it just to save some time. And what I did was I... I went ahead and, and tear mendered these together. So I have a match set, and all I did was take some tear mender. Uh, I did a video last week or two ago on the belly bumper, and I showed how to do these to do an accent. And all I did was I matched two of them, <clears throat> and then I tear mendered them together, together. 
And all that does is keep them from, it's just gonna make it a little bit easier to put these in. I, I'd already went in, whenever you're tying hackles on top of a hook like this, make sure you go in with a pair of, just, just kind of break these stems. Just, you don't have to smash them. You just have to go in and break them because they're relatively round, not completely, they're a little oblong, but it's just a lot easier to set something that's been broke that kind of sits down on top of a round hook because you're trying to put round things on top of round hooks. And what'll happen is it'll have a tendency to want to roll over on you. So I went ahead and just, I, I just put a little, you go back, look at for the belly bump one shows how to do it. I just put a little bit, I took a bodkin and I put a little bit of tear mender, this, this latex glue on the stem of the fly, or the, the feather I mean. Set the other one in there, boom. It's been sitting there for a minute or two, maybe three. And so it, it ties in pretty quick. So I want these to sit right on top of the hook. And like with every you set a feather like this, when you set this thing in here, go in and just start just two or three even wraps, just like that, right on top, and then manipulate your fly. Set this feather exactly where you want it. Do not, don't start cranking on this feather yet. Just nice even wraps, not loose, not really tight, just even tension. And then as you work forward, let that set, you know, just even wraps, let that set that feather. And then, work yourself back, nice even wraps. Now again, back to this thing, I wanna I want show you a sample. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna have, you, I, I know that's really hard to see, but there's not, there's very little material in here. So, next thing we have to do is add some flash on top. This fly, I don't, you know, I've always used, I always use Flashaboo on this fly. I've, I've started using this Crelex. Uh, it's a little stiffer. When you, take, when you take this Crelex out of the package, Crelex is an MFC product, uh, the one I'm using. Uh, I forgot the name of this one, Full Spectrum. I always used Fire Tiger before. And I just, the Fire Tiger gets a little limp. It gets a little bit, you know, it's all right. It's just not, if you're gonna use it, I've used it for years. I just started using this, it's a little stiffer. And I don't want a lot of it in here. I'm gonna put maybe, I don't know, five, six strands of it, and then I'm gonna double it over, so I'll end up with, I'll end up with about 10. So I'm just gonna cut that off. And if, if you've worked with Flashaboo, you can see this is just a little, just a little bit stiffer than Flashaboo is. I'm gonna tie it right in, right here. I'm gonna lay it on top of the hook. I don't need this, I don't even know why I put this in here, to tell you the truth, but I always did. I'm gonna put two or three turns in here. I don't want it to go past, all the way past the tail, you know, just, just hanging out there. Fold it back over, done. It's just, it, it, if I really wanted it in there and I really wanted it to show up, I would've put it on before the feathers, but I don't. I just. I don't even know, like I said, when I first did it, I'm not sure why I put it in there, but I really dug it once it was in there, and so there I was. So now I'm gonna take, uh, put ahead of myself there, sorry about that. Now I'm gonna take some UV Polar Chenille Gold. This stuff, uh, feel free to sub. I mean, just go for it. I, on yellow, I like, you know, my yellow flies, I just like to see a little gold in them. I don't know why. But feel free to sub these things out, the whole thing for that matter, just let it happen. But I'm gonna use the UV Polar Chenille, anything like that you can, you can use. And I wanna show you something about working with this. As you look at this stuff, you'll find that it's always got, it's always leaning one way or the other. I like to make sure that it's pointing down. If you try to work with it up like this, I just find that it fights me a little bit more. So when I get the stuff out of the bag, I make sure they're pointing down, and then I just kind of get them out of the way, come in here, clip a little of that, so I'm just working on a, a nice clean piece of that nylon. And I'm gonna tie this in. Come forward most of the way here, leaving room. I don't wanna go up all the way to the eye because we still have to put, leave yourself about a quarter of an inch here. Uh, I still have to put two more materials on after this. So I don't wanna rush this forward too far. Now we're gonna take this, uh, we're gonna take the material, this UV Polish chenille, 
trying to keep my out shoulder out of the way here and so you can see it. But I'm going to put this, like I, I talk about this all the time, on this first wrap, always make sure this first one is just anchored. Do not just head forward and, and go. Give yourself one good full turn. The materials are there. Grab your feather and this material and stretch it. Just anchor that in there. Don't let it twist around and then just pull, you know, manipulate that back and don't let it go. Watch, I'll, I'll just do another one so you can see. Don't let it do that. Don't let it start turning. As soon as it starts to turn, just manipulate it back. Come in here, manipulate it back. Make it marry back towards the back end of the hook. So here we're in here. I've got plenty of room now to set my mirror boot. Generally, I'd put four turns in somewhere in that range. Four is probably what I'm shooting for. If you got three, you'll be just fine. Okay, so now I've got just a little bit of flash in here. We're going to cover most of this up, right? So I got just a little bit of flash. Now I'm going to take a marabou and I'm going to sort through this because this is a cover. This is not, this is not supposed to be way back into the fly. This is a cover and I don't want it to go much past the back of this flash. I just want to basically cover that up. So I'm not looking for a really long plume. So you know where the edges are long, really long like that. I just want one that's a little bit shorter, which I probably should sort these before I go, but that one's fine. And most of this is going to get covered up with the next set and the next set. It's all a layer. Excuse me. So I'm gonna I'm I want to end up with a three turns maybe four at the max of this because we're gonna. We're going to palmer this, and then I'm going to put my thread back over top of it. Okay, so we're going to come in here, just like always. If you set one, come underneath your hook. Come from right to left. Come on the other side of it. Don't catch any of that. I'm a little bit far forward there. So I'm going to come in here. Get back. Butt it up against the thread. Come from behind it. Do a figure eight over top. One, two, and set it. Just reef on that thing on your second one. It'll set right in there. If your feather twists, you didn't do your figure eight right. Come in here. I wouldn't cut that stem off if you were starting to do that. Let it grab your tweezies. Or whatever hackle plier you like. Make sure that feather's hanging to the that you don't let it twist, just like we did with the chenille. I have a broken stem here, I don't have much to work with. So I'm gonna go one, keeping it nice, palmered off to the, so everything's straight up and down, don't let it go twisting on you. Don't worry about, it. you can go all the way to the eye, two, three, that's plenty. You can go all the way to the eye with this, because the way I do my hackle with these things, when I, the way I set this hackle is I always wrap my thread back over top of it. So I'm, I'm pretty far advanced forward. I'm gonna take my two fingers and my thumb, I wet my hand and just go over top, stroke, stroke it back like this and come in here and I go right back over top of this hackle. And the reason I do that is that the hackle stems are really, really light when you use marabou. And if you do it right, and you just don't go way back over, just go over enough to cover your, your stems that you've wrapped, it'll stay nice and fluffy when it's all wet or dried out. But what you've done is you've covered that stem so it's not going to get one tooth in it from one fish and have the thing come undone. I mean, my, my, step, my hackles never unwrap. They just, because they're covered up and nothing can get to them. A little piece of that on the back. So now, I've, you know, so I've got just enough room there for a head, and now I'm going to take an olive. This is again. This is completely up to you how you set your color palette here. It's it's. This is your piece of art. All I'm going to do is kind of try to match 
what I'm going to use for a head, which is going to be an olive senius, which I'm going to darken a little bit when we get to the end anyway, just so they're kind of close to the same color. And so I don't need, because of the way this fly is designed, it's, it's multitude, it's, it's three different stacks. I don't have to go really heavy on this one. I can make this one kind of light, and I want it to end about where the other hackle ends. I don't want it to go way back into the fly. I want it to be about where the other hackle is. I'm going to come in here on the back side, away from me. I'm going to set it right on the edge, right, you know, right on the, the, the outside of this feather, or of this fly. Come in here, and this is a tonal thing. This is not, we're just trying to design a tone in this one. So we've got this, in, this, this toner in the back side. Come in and clean it up. Don't worry about this head too much because it's all going to be underneath a whole bunch of other stuff in a minute. So there, if you are a gluer, not a glue sniffer like Jeremy, a gluer, if you are a gluer, and by the way, if you have a cold, that's, that's always a good thing. A little lacquer is always good for you. Don't do that. Don't smell lacquers. Nobody wants to end up like Johnny. Oh, you always pick it on, Johnny. So, glue this. If you're one of, if you're gonna glue it, glue it now, because it's gonna be impossible to get into this thing in a minute. Because you're gonna have all this marabou all over it, and it's gonna be stuck to this fly. So, glue it. Let it sit. That's lacquer. It'll go pretty quick. So, I'll, I'm gonna set that aside. And so, what you'll see is that we have. We've got the marabou, so we've kind of started to marry that marabou, marabou into the color of the, the wing. You can see it there, and I got one toner on the outside, not a really thick one, and we're gonna layer that, just like, well, you'll see in a second how we're gonna do that. Everything should be nice and flat on the fly uh, and done. So now I'm gonna take a one aught Universal Predator for the front hook. I don't think I mentioned that earlier, Generally when I do these, I do two side, like I've got a one and a one aught. You can go, you can do them the same side. And some of the big ones I use a two aught, and I use double two aughts. That's just, I, I generally go down at least one, if not two hook size for my back hook. Again, back hook's designed to not, to, I don't want it to sink, I don't want it to be heavy. So, on this front hook, what we're gonna do is if you're, if you're not familiar with your, if this fly and you don't know where you want it, just get a sample and come in here. What I want to do is I want to end at the a one third. I'm going to break this hook into thirds. And so don't get so far forward that you don't have space to do this. You got to put your eye and all that. So come in here at the one third point and just so you've got a reference, something to look at. Start your thread. I'm going to do um, surf line or, or beetle line, whatever. 17 pound, 19 strand. You're going to want about six inches or so of this stuff because we're going to wrap it all the way up. And you just want to leave some to work with. You know, don't don't fight yourself on this. So I come all the way up, back through the eye. I, I always do that just because of durability. Hmm. Coffee break. <clears throat> there it is. All right, so take this, set it, give it a pull like that, and all you're doing is get that little kink in there so it sits back there. I'm not going to put a bead on this one. It's got so much stuff back there that I don't really think it's, and I don't, th I don't leave it back far enough to worry about it swinging around and hooking on the front fly, you know, swinging around. And so I don't really think I need the bead on this one. So I'm going to come in here, make sure they're running parallel to each other, move forward, not worry too much about <clears throat> covering that up, just open wraps. Both of them through. Now when I get up here, now I start, now I want things tight. When you get to that last one, give yourself two or three turns right at the eye of the hook, really tight, come in here, take your thumbnail, smash that back, squeeze that really tight. Before you go back, before you do anything right now, look down through the eye of that hook. Make sure you pull that really tight. I, I've done it myself. I've seen lots of flies tied this way. You get done with this thing and you didn't do that. 
you can't get your tippet through this eye. So just make sure that you really reefed on it, come back, be cognizant of, of where your one third point is here, just kind of look at it. I like to cut this, I like to take this wire that's on the bottom now and cut it at about the halfway mark. Again, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to pre-build my taper into my fly. And so I've got to come to the halfway point right there. That's where my wire ends. Come back here. Now we're going to take, you can take your fly. And by the way, you can put the beads in. It, it doesn't matter. I just, I'm kind of going ahead. Just sometimes I put them in, sometimes I don't. So now we're going to, we're going to build this. I don't think you can see this. It's kind of a, this fly's kind of been beat up a little bit. But what we're going to do is we're going to end up, we're going to do the same step we just did on the tail. We're going to palmer some uh, marabou, or if you want to, at this point, this is a great spot when you're going to cover this connection. All right, we got to get him out of the way. We're going to use a little bramer trick. Y'all watch that kid. He's starting to bug me. He's pretty dang good. <clears throat> I saw him do this the other day on one of his videos. He took these little hair things and did that. <clears throat> Damn, I wish I thought of that. We have to get rid of that kid. Anyway, we're going to come in here. If you had some chickaboo or woolly bugger marabou, and you came in here right now, and I'm going to do that with this one. These aren't really chickaboos, but they're, I saw them on there. They're really short. I'm going to come in here, and we're going to take this, and we're going to set it on the side of the fly right here. We're just doing a cover connection on one side. Take the other one. These are, if, you, if you haven't watched the video, if you haven't seen it, I talk about these a lot. There's, there's woolly bugger marabou. There's strung marabou, select marabous. It has to do with the length of the stem when you get into the other ones. Woolly bugger marabous are really short and stubby on the end like this, right? And so if you have woolly bugger marabou, which has really no other use in this as far as I can see, a couple of wet fly things I've seen it, but it really is short and stubby. But you come in here and you put these in. This one's got a little bit of a tip to it. I'm just going to, I'm just showing you another way here. So we can tie that in on the side. And all we're doing is covering this, we're covering the connection, right? And so now we're going to just go forward. Mm -hmm. oh, I can't stand a loose wrap like that. I'm going to come forward to right where that wire is. And we're going to stop where the, where the wires are. We came underneath and we stopped. Boom. And so that now... We started out with wire coming around this way. We're coming back here. We're meeting where they are. We're just balancing this thing up. We don't have any. That was kind of a loose wrap. Don't like those. Now we're gonna we're gonna. If you wanted to right there, if you wanted to palmer that just like we did on the tail, that's fine. I mean, it, uh, I do it both ways. If I see that woolly bugger marabou laying around, I grab one of those. If not, I palmer one. I think on the original ones, I palmered them. So now I'm going to look for a, a, a olive toner. And this one I want to be slightly thicker than the last one. I want this one to be, I'm starting to build bulk now. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get a, a little bit thicker one. And we're going to start layering. And, and I'm a big fan of layering these things. I, I just think it helps build some realism into the fly. And so every one of these I do now, from now on, I'm going to go halfway. So there's the green one, the olive one back here. This one's going to go halfway through it, just like that. Put it dead on the side. Take a look at it. Make sure everything's where it belongs. Just get him in there. Any mistakes that are made on this fly are due to Elka Seltzer cold medicine. Okay, same thing now. Now we're going to go up here to the one third. We're going to put. We're going to just duplicate what we did in the back. I'm going to come in here, taking my UV polar chenille, cut the junk off of it. Come in here, set that. I'm going to come to the one third point. Right there, we're going to put four turns of four turns of 
UV polar chenille. Same thing as before. Get it set to the side. Make sure it's laying back over your hook. One complete turn. Grab your materials, everything, and stretch and set. Making sure it's staying back. Boom. Again, it's about four turns. Just you just gotta look at it. You can't you may pull harder on your material than I do. You know, there's just there's just a lot of things that can go there. And now we're going to set two different materials on here. We're going to take the yellow and we're going to layer this one too. Everything's going to get layered from now on. If you, and when I start these, I usually do singles and my second, my the last one I put on, I usually run a double. If you don't have a, if the, if the material isn't quite right, if it's not thick enough, for whatever reason, you know, don't lock yourself in. I, I might put two on here. I don't think I need two on this one. I'm gonna come into the halfway point. By the way, I cut that off. It's like I, I do the same thing on my barely. I come in here on the halfway point. There's the halfway on that one. Lock him in. Grab a green one. Try to match them relatively close, same size on each side. Don't think that this is getting really chewed up. This is kind of marginal. Matter of fact, most of this is pretty marginal. Uh, Marabou. Oh, I might not even get one out of it. Might get one fly left out. I'm always talking about this, how you got to sort these materials. and uh, I'm going to be lucky to get a fly out of the rest of that gob of that marabou right there. thought I had more in it. Luckily, I know where to get more. Okay, cover this up. Just dampen that. We're going to go halfway point right here. Boom. Keep it right on the side. You can see I'm, I'm not letting it lay over on each, either side. Nice and tight. Let's clean that up a little bit. Tie this back in. I, you don't have to cut that out. I just, I, I think it's kind of a pain in the hind end to, to work around it. I can do this faster than I can sit and mess with it. So now I'm going to come back to the third point right there where we always, we left that, we set it originally, that's where our head was going to be. Same thing as before, one complete turn, set it, stretch it, move forward. Watch your shoulder. Hey, got yelled at, watch your shoulder. So we're going to fall under that, just manipulate that back. Don't, you just don't want to lock it, you know, get it caught in there. Okay. So now we're going to set that, make sure everything's anchored really well. Go back and do this again. Now up here, if you don't get a really huge thick plume, you're going to double this one up. And I, I, you're trying to build a taper. It's pretty hard to get that out of one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have two on this one for sure. Ouch. Hey, Bramer's thing didn't work as good for that. Just got speared. I tried. Okay, so we're gonna layer this one. I'm gonna have it right on the side here. Come at the halfway point, roughly. Set it on the side, squeeze that material, get it set really nice. Give yourself room to tie that off. I don't want to build a lot of bulk up here right now because I'm going to, I'm going to put in, uh, the head's got to set right, in, right about here. Again, and the same thing's going to happen with his head, it's going to be done in thirds, so.
Same, we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna match those two. Nice tight wraps, just because we don't want to build any extra bulk there. Everything's on the side. Really keep these wraps tight right now. Do not, so we're off to the side. Ooh, this won't be easy getting two out of this piece of junk. These are all good connection covers, but they're not really good. Got it. Actually got one big, that's a really thick one right there. Got lucky. Okay, layer this one halfway into that one to the, the second one we put in there. That one is, that is a really thick plume right there. I didn't think I was gonna get away with that. I did. I'm not gonna put a second one in because that, that plume was probably twice as thick as that one is. That's fine. So now tighten that up, nice and clean. You should be able to see a two-tone. There's yellow here, there's yellow, olive there. If you're setting this stuff and it's not, if you're going around and you can't like see your body in here on the bottom, you know, when you're, when you're looking down here, if it's got marabou laying around there, you gotta tighten that up more. You just gotta just hold the material with your hand so it doesn't allow it to roll under and get those really secure wraps right now. So now I left one third of this hook and now I'm gonna take uh, break, I'm gonna take this and break it down into thirds also. So I'm gonna, I started with a third of the, the overall hook length. Now I'm gonna go to the one third of that. I'm gonna tie in my material. I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna tie one third in there. And that's gonna give us this, this two-tone effect to the head. Oops, wrong fly. Two-tone effect to the head, give us a nice base to put our eye on. I'm gonna use, as you see me, if you, I do a lot of this with uh, Greg Senio's uh, laser dub. I love this stuff. Uh, this isn't the color, I'm gonna two-tone it. Sorry about that. I'm gonna two-tone this, uh, olive on the top, yellow on the bottom. And so you're gonna have two different colors here. On this top, I'm gonna put just a touch. I do this with a lot of them. I'm gonna take just a touch of a different color, this darker color, about one third, two thirds. I'm gonna blend this one. This one I am trying to just get it to be, a lot of times when I do dubbing blendings, I don't try to get them a shade. This one I do. I'm gonna just try to get it just a little bit darker. It, that's a little darker than I wanted. I took a little bit out right there. Okay, that should be enough to do him. Just, uh, I just, I want a little bit, of, a little bit darker head than the overall body. Okay, then I'm gonna tone on this as close as I can get with the yellow. Take a little of this. And you'll find when you work with this stuff, there's different consistency, consistencies to all of it. And you've gotta make sure you pull this stuff and make sure that the fibers are long enough, that they're, just, you just keep pulling it like this and so you're trying, they're usually cut at about an inch. And so if you keep pulling it, so they're all the same length like that. Now I got a tie in. I know I'm gonna have plenty right there and I'm not gonna have a whole bunch of little short ones so I tie it in that they're suddenly, they all fall out and they're just there. So I, what you'll see me doing is I, I pull it dead in the middle. I just grab it like this and making sure, yeah, that's, it's not gonna slip out anywhere and just get it to about the thickness you want, about a popsicle stick, not quite, width. So now I'm gonna tie this on the side I'm at the one third mark, and I'm gonna make sure that this, this first piece right here lays back at least halfway into that yellow. Again, we're, we're just gonna accentuate this layering effect. And so, still have a little bit extra in there. You'll get used to what you like to tie this in with. And so I'm gonna take this, I took more than I wanted. I'm gonna take this, and, and this, this is a simple trick for working with this stuff. It makes it really, really, really simple to tie in. Got the hook on the side, I've tipped it over. I take this and you just simply bend 
your thread, bend it like that, and you make that little cup right there. And I'm sure you can see that. And so this allows you to just pinpoint accuracy, put that stuff in. You're not going to wrap around the hook, do one tight turn, and then just finish it off with a couple in front of it. And you'll see it's right on the edge. It's laying flat on the edge. And I'm going to do the other side. I'll put this darker color in first, the uh, olive on the top, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Same thing, tip the, you can tip it back over, grab this, bend it, so you got that nice little cup right there, that little conical shit right there, and just come in and boom, set it right on top. And you can see I'm pulling it up. Can you see that, Jeremy? Mm -hmm. It's really tight, it's on the edge. Don't let go, don't let any pressure off, and just accelerate, just <clears throat> two really, really tight turns. And what you can see is I'm, I'm open hook right here. I'm bare hook or you know, virtually either side and because I, I, I need to be able to glue those eyes in and not have them roll. I don't want a bunch of, I don't want a bunch of uh, material sitting there to glue my eye on. I want, I'd prefer it to touch the hook and that way I know I get a really nice secure uh, adhesion to the, from the eye to the hook as opposed to having it sitting on a bunch of soft materials if the materials break, it doesn't matter if you glue to the top of the materials, if the materials break, your eye's off. And I actually, I actually buy into this whole eye thing. I, I, I like it. Uh, I think it's a target zone for the fish. I think it's a trigger point. I think I, I, I'm pretty sold on, I mean, same thing with hot spots. I'm pretty sold on the fact that they, they go, they, they actually hit that. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I went from one third. Now I'm at the front third of the hook. And take this. Ring a ding ding. Come in here. Do the same thing. I'm going to go up. Trying to keep my shoulder out here. And I'm going to come in. Boom. One third point right there. So, little pause there, okay, right? So I got it nice, nice and even, each side. Ouch. Oh, that's twice with this. That's twice trying to kill me. So now I'm gonna take the, the remaining green here, making sure it's nice and th tight there. Come back in, fold it over, boom, nice and tight. If you, if, if, if you don't think that's set, you don't have, you know, just, look at it. I didn't think that was quite wrapped where I wanted it. And so I backed it off and just squeezed it. Perfecto. So now I'm just going to build a little bit of a head. Before I do anything right here, before I before I half hitch, or whip finish it, whatever, it is, look at the thing. Look at it right now. Make sure you should be able to see. I just pulled this over so you could see it on the bottom. I can see the shank of the hook all the way. You know, when we first came up with this style, I think it was on the TNA bunker, was the first one of these stacked heads like this back in the 90s sometime. Uh, that, and we started, did the same thing, we did it with wool. And, man, and you see people tie them, commercial even, and they come out and have way too much material on them. When you look at this thing, it's not a lot of material. And if you have too much, you're not going to see that shank right there. You can see it on both sides. Get that marabou out of the way. You can see it on both sides. If you can't, if it's, you, you've got too much on, just back it off and do it because your eyes are not going to stick. You're not trying to, this, this thing isn't, you're just trying to build a silhouette out of this stuff. You don't need a lot of material. So this one's fine. And so I'm going to come in here, build a little head up just for visual. Again, most of this is going to get covered up. Well, all of it is really. So we can glue this. We are, we're going to glue this with uh, zap, so you won't have any problem with your fly coming undone. So now we're going to come in here, and I just get the excess. Just I'm, I'm cleaning this up, looking things over, nice and everything's nice and flush. Look at the bottom, make sure nothing's moved. Just come in and look. If you see a little bit of material down here, and you just say, "Oh man, there's a little bit more." Just come in here, cut it out, do it now. Don't, don't, don't 
don't rush this. Just, just get this nice and clean. So when you look at it, there's the hook bare. Everything's nice and clean. You got a good spot to hook your eyes to. I'm going to use, we put the, we're going to trim it up afterwards. I'm going to use uh, a Jurassic eye. <coughs> Pardon me. <sighs> Marabou, I'm sure. Um, I'm going to use an eight millimeter Jurassic eye. I like this eye. That, and, and there's a bunch of eyes out there. There's, you know, there's four or five different companies that make these things. What I'm looking for, they're, they're all pretty much the same to me. And I look for, on this particular one, I just, I dig this Jurassic eye because it's got a little bit of yellow gold into it, a little bit of red, and it's just, it's a, it's a cool looking eye on this particular one. I don't put that one on the ones that are different color, just on my yellow one. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, we come in here. I've already, I went in and I took a little alcohol to the back of this thing. And because on the back of this, they put these so that they stay in these packages nice, right? So you can see them. Mine's all messed up now because I've been using it. But they, so they sit there and you can see them. There's an, there's an adhesive on the back of these eyes that makes them a little bit, it depends on the glue you're using. Uh, it just doesn't make them set as well. And I, even on my, even on the UV stuff, I always thought that they, the, and I've kind of got, I'm kind of leaving the UV world for me personally, but, uh, on, on this particular application. But for me, I just clean them off and then I stick them to my hand. There's always just a little bit of sticky to them, but I took a little alcohol and just uh, I rubbed them down. And, I'm, and just a, a really simple trick, because we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna do this with Zap again. But if you see, I put those eyes on there and I have their pupils going forward. Seems, you know, not like a big deal. It is a big deal when you sit here and you're going to go set in these eyes and suddenly your, your glue's starting to set and you're like, oh crap, my eye's in the wrong direction. When I pull these off, it's going to be going the way I want it to. You know, I want the eye pupil to the front. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to start on the bottom. And I'm going to, I want to center this eye in the, mid, in the, in the middle of the, the head. And so I'm going to, these are eight millimeter eyes. You do not want to put 10 millimeters worth of glue on here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it nice and flat. I'm going to come in here. Don't work with a, a, a really, if you're using an applicator, if you're using, generally I tie, and I probably would do it today with the, with the traditional zap set. And uh, I'm not going to do it today simply because I let that roll over and the tube's all full and I don't want to mess with it right now. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to just really lightly dab that on there. And all I'm doing is trying to get it. That's, I had a pretty big drop right there. All I'm trying to do is get less than eight millimeters of glue on here. If you don't take your time right now and you let that stuff, and I'm, I'm basically just looking for one good drop, but I'm trying to not let it happen and, and migrate out into the material. If it does that, and you get eight, 10 millimeters worth of glue on here, and you go to set this thing, all right, I'm just gonna set it right in the middle, right there. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm looking things over. I want it to be centered right where it belongs in the middle of the hook, do that. And now I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna put, from the top down, I'm going to put two drops, and I'm gonna let it try to migrate to the back of the hook, to the other eye. So I'm going to come in here. Again, you can't rush this because if you do, it migrates out the, out the materials out the side. And so you've got to go, let it just sink through slowly. If you try to put one big drop on there, it's going to go out. And what's going to happen to you is you are going to be glued to your fly. So you're going to come in here and now I let those two drops go down just making sure everything's nice and even, pupils forward, eyes where it belongs. And I come in here, just give it a little bit of a squeeze. Make sure that it's, I go like this on the top, and then I'm just gonna squeeze them. Do not sit over top of this stuff. Do not, don't look right over top of it. When, the, when that stuff kicks, man, it'll, it'll make your eyes water. If you did this wrong and you rushed this, and you are sitting there, and right now, and you let you went like this. You'll own. You'll have two eyes on your, 
on the back of your on your hand because you've glued yourself. I, I took the time to just set it and I hold it until usually it's about three to five seconds, but you'll feel it and you'll it'll actually get heat. You'll feel heat in there. All right, so they're set nice. They're all nice and even. So now's the fun part. You're gonna come in here and you're going to trim the head. So we've got this nice, thick, fluffy, senile head. You're gonna come in here like that and just cut it flat. If it was forward, just cut it flat. Just like that, nice. And then you're just simply gonna round it. Leave a little bit more than you think you need. Don't, don't trim it to exactly the shape you want because it's gonna, when it gets wet, it's gonna compress just a little bit just in the weight of the material. So leave it just a little bit longer than normal. This is really cool, it's just a fun way to sculpt these heads. And then just kind of take, take a good clean look, okay, a little bit here, just even them out kinda. And basically we want it to be the, the length of the, when the marabou's laying back like that, so just so it lays back into it. And again, I layered this one halfway into the marabou here, halfway into the marabou there. So when it lays in, and if it's a little long, that's kind of cool looking too, because it'll give you a little of this reflective value in here, this, the yellow, you know, that micro, uh, I don't know what that stuff is, microfiber of some sort, but in the senos. And so it's just really, when this thing's done, can you get a, can you see the bottom of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you're seeing is I didn't, I didn't obstruct with my marabou's over here, didn't obstruct them, I can see my body, my eyes set perfectly in the center. When you look down over top of it, same thing, you can see marabou on the sides, you see your flash, all right? Comes in here like this, and it's sitting nice and flat. You've got a nice thick tail, broad tail, because you use the, the saddles off that American. And so there you go, it's got the, it's just a nice flat tail. So when this thing's sitting in the water, it's sitting just like that. These tails, it sits down, it'll, you'll, you'll move it, and all this, and they'll sit flat on the water like that. This flash you do on the top will just give you a little bit of reflection down. This fly is designed to be pulled like this right at you. It'll go like that, and then it'll just, it, tails will just undulate back and forth, twitch, twitch, boom. It's gonna be, you will, you will dig this fly fish new. Brother, I don't care if you're catching a lot of fish or not, it is fun to fish. I hope you liked it, hope it helped you out.